So go ahead and open your web browser of choice. I'm using Google Chrome. So once you're there, I'd like you to go ahead and download cardboardbg.jpg. So I'm just going to click on cardboardbg.bg.jpg. For me, because I clicked on it, it loads as its own page. If it does that, that's okay. You can just do file, save as. and save it to desktop, or if you want to create a folder for the workshops, that's fine. A place where you know where it is. We're going to be using this file quite a bit today. Cardboard-bg. All it is is a scanned version of the brown piece of paper you have at your desk. And once you've downloaded it, please open Cardboard BG JPG in Photoshop. I will do the same. Go to Photoshop, File, Open. Sure. They are actually in your applications folder too. This was throwing everybody out. So you, okay. if you go to applications and then you can drag it into your Okay. Now we're just opening this up. Yep, so you're opening Photoshop. And you want to open that cardboard right in Photoshop. Now the tools that we use are all in the same place, fortunately. They just look a little bit different in terms of the layout. Okay, so those of you that have, could everyone look at me and make your eyes sparkle if you have the paper open in Photoshop? Okay, so now we all have cardboard open. So what's the point of Photoshop? It's right in the name, right? I mean, we've actually, it's one of the few pieces of software that the title has become a recognized word in society. What does it mean when you Photoshop someone? Take pictures of them? Nope. Take pictures. You mark up or edit the picture. 
Yeah, could you be more specific? When if if you heard somebody photoshopped Michelle Obama, what so they do? You remix the image and uh, you edit it. Yeah. Alter. I think alter is a better word when it comes to photographs. I think that's the general thought. As designers, absolutely, that's what we're doing. We're editing, we're changing, we're modifying. Um, Photoshop is the go-to place if you have a photograph that's either been taken with a digital camera or scanned, and you want to alter it in some way. You want to edit it in some way. So for now, I just wanted us all to start with a fairly simple image. So the image that we have is cardboard. The very thing that I was using is the background. Now let's zoom in. So all the way near the bottom, you should see a magnifying glass. One of the core tools. That magnifying glass is in every single Adobe software, even the ones we're not going to cover today. So the very first tool, magnifying glass, what's going to happen when you click with that magnifying glass? How can I tell how far I'm zooming in when I use the magnifying glass? Anyone notice? So more specific. Where? Where at the bottom or where at the top? You're both right. It's actually showing in a few different places. Bottom left-hand corner of the image. Bottom left-hand corner, which you can't see because I have really low resolution because of the projector. Yeah, it's down here somewhere. Ah, yeah. See how it says 600% at the bottom left-hand corner? And then... Karen also said there was another place where she saw it. Top. No, the center. bottom. The bottom corner. Oh, you saw it here. Yeah. Okay. Well, someone also top center is telling me six hundred percent. It's actually a third place because Photoshop does everything in duplicate or triplicate. All the way near the top, I actually have this six hundred percent. Three different places where it's telling me how zoomed in I am. So it must be fairly important to know how zoomed in you are. But what does that mean? What does it mean when I'm zooming all the way in? And can anyone figure out how to zoom out with the same tool? Shift. Nope. Shift didn't work. Option. Option. If you hold down the option key, and I'm never totally confident it's going to work on PCs, because the, there's some slight differences between the shortcuts on a Mac versus a PC. So all we're doing is zooming in. We're just using that same magnifying glass, zooming in by clicking, holding the option key and clicking to zoom out. But let's zoom as far in as we can. So I'm going to click once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What's the most that I can zoom in? 3,200%. And what do I see at 3,200%? What's the word that you said, Steve? Pixelated. Pixelated. So we're all looking at these pixels, these squares. Why can't we zoom in anymore? Because the pixel is the atom of graphics. But what do you notice about pixels? <coughs> You're zooming in, zoom in all the way with your magnifying glass. Just choose that magnifying glass, click, 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 and take some big squares. Tell me some things you notice about those squares. Different colors. Different tones, different colors. What do you say? They look like tiles. They look like tiles. They absolutely look like tiles. Anything else? Like each square is all the same color. Only one color within a square. Yes, that's one of the key points. What about the relationship of the squares to each other? Yeah, there's no pattern. I don't see a pattern. So the one thing that people didn't mention is probably too obvious to mention, which is that all the squares are exactly the same size. So the fact that all the squares are the same size and that each square only contains one color, those are really at the heart of what a pixel is. The smallest information, the smallest amount of color you can have in computer graphics. 